All right, welcome to the March 10th Hyperledger TSC uh, call. As you are all aware, I know you're all aware because you've been on this call before, uh, you have to abide by two things. Uh, the first is the antitrust policy notice, which is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is the code of conduct, which is linked in our agenda. So if we go ahead and start our agenda, we'll see that the first thing is the announcements, uh, the standard announcements, which we see every week of the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to add, please leave a comment on the wiki page and uh, it will go out to hundreds of different Hyperledger developers. The second announcement is that the Hyperledger Global Forum 2022 has been set for Dublin, Ireland, September 12th through 13th. There's an events page up there and the CFPs are now open. Uh, they close on April 29th. And um, you know, if you have anything that you would like to talk about that you're doing that is interesting within Hyperledger or with Hyperledger projects or labs, please uh, consider submitting a CFP. Uh, yeah, any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Okay, uh, so if there's no announcements, I did leave on uh, the agenda the Hyperledger Cello report. Um, there was a few responses that came back uh, from the Hyperledger Cello community to the questions that were asked. Um, I am not sure that there's anything specific that we need to talk about in this particular meeting, um, but if anybody has any questions uh, that we should make sure we follow up on, um, that's now the time to bring it up. Okay, uh, so nothing there. We do have the Explorer and the Firefly uh, reports that are due. Uh, the Firefly community has reached out to ask for an extension, uh, which I appreciate the ask. Uh, we normally don't get people asking, but it is nice to know that uh, <laughs> people are out there thinking about the, the fact that the project reports are due. Uh, next week, Hyperledger Ursa is due. Um, there is some conversation about the confusion in the dates. Um, in the project update calendar, we see that the dates listed there are the Thursday of the TSC call with a note at the top that says that the, the reports are due the Monday prior um, so that people have a chance to review them before our TSC calls. Um, but the calendar entries that show up are also on Thursday, which is kind of confusing for people. So uh, I think maybe from here forward, maybe it would be a good idea to allow for those Thursday dates to stand and we'll review them in the following Thursday's TSE call. Uh, does anybody have a problem with that? Dana, was that, I came off mute. I'm uh, not sure if that, that was, was a, a problem. That was a no, sorry, okay. no problems. Okay, great. Thank you, Dano. I appreciate the fact that I'm not the only one speaking anymore. Um, all right, so with that, uh, the first thing that we have is an ask from uh, Min in our discussion topic. Yeah, Arno. Sorry, sorry. sorry. I, no. I was trying to figure out uh, which report I read this in, but there was a comment about the website not being easy to find for oh, the yes. project. Yes, thank you. And that was I, in the Hyperledger Grid one. Yes, and I put a comment saying, yeah, I think because Dave responded saying, yeah, we should look into this, but I think it's something we really ought to have a discussion on at the TSC level. So I'm not saying we need to have that discussion now, but uh, I mean, for those who haven't seen my comments, this is about, you know, some uh, some projects have used the, 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 the capability that is offered to projects to have a top level website a la kind of like grid.hyperledger.org. 
and it's not used uni universally. And this is not really linked from anywhere else as far as I know. So you kind of have to know that this site even exists. And I know this is something I have looked into for Fabric before, but I was like, well, this is yet another web page to, to maintain and I just give up. But I think, you know, the point is the grid project reports that they would like that page to be easier to find. I guess they are making an effort to <laughs> keep it maintained and they may be a bit frustrated that it's not so easy to and so visible. So I, my point is merely that I think they should have, we should have a discussion on this. Okay, Jenna. So Faces used it since we came on and what we did is we just pointed to our landing page for our documentation. Um, so we're not really maintaining a separate landing page. It's just an easier place to get to our read the docs documentation. So that's if you're if we're concerned about maintaining extra places, I think we could reuse that landing that the project.ipledge.org and point it to an existing resource, even if it is their wiki page. <clears throat> and just a, a question, Dano, uh, the base at hyperledger.org, that's something that uh, is provided through Hyperledger, or is that something that you guys have set up separately? Um, it's read the docs is where we have the doc team put all their docs. So um, I thought that Hyperledger had a standard read the docs participation. Maybe we don't. Oh, yeah, rather than put it, yeah, you know, sorry, Dano. Uh, my, my bad on not asking the question properly. The actual URL um, that's being routed through the Linux Foundation and Hyperledger, or is that being routed through somewhere else? It's a subdomain, so it has to be managed by Hyperledger. So whoever controls the Hyperledger org domain configured it for us on our first month or two on the on the project. Okay, so then the Hyperledger staff we have for some, but not for others. And what's the reason? Ryan knows the answer to that question, I believe. Yeah, I just haven't been. Uh, uh, I did it, so blame me. Um, I. We have PCC. I can I can jump in there and add subdomains. I'm a little bit reticent to do it um, because we've kind of had an explosion of them over the last little while. At the same time, I end up saying yes eventually. So we have like the Hyperledger Challenge and Start Here and TSC. All of those are just things that I've added, uh, you know, to make lives easier. And that's just a DNS setting in PS or PCC. So, okay. Kamlesh? Uh, sorry, maybe I'm not aware, but uh, every project has some kind of this uh, subdomain URL, like Besu and like Grid, because I can't find the no. fab for Aries or other projects. No, so I think that's what we were just talking about. Not all of them have them, only some of them have them, and they're only when. Somebody requests it from Rye specifically. Mm, okay. So, so any plans to have every project such have a such kind of uh, subdomain URLs, or is it depend on the project's maintainer's choice? I I think yeah. Go it's ahead, Rye. Yeah, it's up to the maintainers to ask. Um, originally, it was Sawtooth who who asked. Uh, so we we created one, and then. Uh, you know, as people have asked, they've been, they've been created. Um, some projects are, they don't want it. Uh, and some projects do so. Okay. I don't know. I think, I think your point is well taken. We should probably have some sort of consistent way of doing this. Um, and you know, I think that could be a discussion that we have in a future meeting about the way in which we proceed to have consistency across projects. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the fact that Rai doesn't seem to know if he really should do this or not is, you know, is to me more evidence that we should have a policy. And then for you know, and after that, he can just execute based on that. Yeah. without having to worry about whether he's doing something wrong or not. 
which I don't think is there's anything wrong there. So there's no worries. Yeah, definitely. David. Next week would be a good time for this conversation. I am talking to our internal designer about mocking up some uh, new ways to present project content on the website. So this could be a good time. She said that by next week, she will have some mockups that we could look at. So we could talk about that and the, kind of the sub domain question at the same time. And I agree with Rai, it's very unclear if doing these or is, is effective or not, we should probably dive into the analytics and see, you know, I think moving something off of the main website or the main wiki, you know, could just make it that much harder to find. So I think it's very unclear. Okay, well, let's uh, then pause this conversation until next week. All right, so then uh, first off, uh, Min has asked that we create a task force for uh, reviewing the different mentorship projects. So as you are aware, yesterday was the last day to submit any mentorship projects to um, be considered for this year's mentorship program. And uh, we need three to four people from the TSC to review those proposals and make sure that they're a good fit as uh, mentorship projects. Dino? What's the conflict of interest policy? I have one that's in consideration. Uh, I don't know that we have a conflict of interest policy. Yeah, so Tracy, I, I, just so you know, um, yeah. yeah, just give a little summary. So yesterday we closed the uh, um, proposal submission. We received 39 uh, project proposals. So it's so great to see the, uh, uh, the community's interest in participating and mentoring this year. Uh, many of the projects, uh, I see a lot of returning mentors and, uh, and new, new names, new mentors as well. Uh, and, and the project proposal come from, a, you know, uh, I would say, you know, it's not just, dominated by certain projects. They really represent a very diverse composition of our projects, our working groups and, and labs. So I'm very excited to see kind of just the, uh, uh, the submissions that we got. So we got 39. So this year we'll have to unfortunately eliminate some. Uh, we have funding uh, to fund 30. Uh, that's kind of the maximum number of projects that we can fund. Um, so we will need a selection committee, so a, a TSC task force to help us um, evaluate these projects. So this, uh, Tracy is showing kind of the criteria that we've used in the, in the past um, for evaluating projects. So I just wanted to validate if these, uh, you know, the criteria is still valid and, and also just to see if we have suitable volunteers to help us with this process. And, and Min, in the past, have we had any sort of conflict of interest? I don't think that's an issue because they know you, you know, uh, maybe one of the projects is yours, but we're really selecting 30. Uh, so, you know, unless you submit it 10 or a multiple, that might be an issue. But if it's just one, I, I really don't see that as an issue unless other people have objections. Because some of the mentors are gonna be TSC members. I, I've seen that. Um, I, I was gonna say, based on our history, um, mm -hmm. there, it's, there's nothing explicit um, right. because we've had plenty of uh, TSC members who were submitting, uh, submitting projects and on the selection committee, we've had uh, staff who have submitted projects and advised the selection committee. Um, so I, I guess, just it will be obvious that you have one because your name will be on one of the proposals. Um, you know, maybe when this task force spins up, just explicitly state, you know, this is the project that I submitted and I don't feel comfortable, you know, arguing for or against it. Uh, you know, and as Min said, we're calling from about 40 to 30. So it's not like the competition is super stiff. So I see Dano is giving a thumbs up. I think we're on the same wavelength and I'll shut up. All right, Hart. Yeah, as long as there are a handful of people on the committee, this shouldn't be a problem, right? For sure. 
All right, so I think uh, what I'm asking for in today's call is to see if we can get three to four people to put their hands up as people who would like to volunteer to one, evaluate the criteria, uh, and then two, to go through and uh, review the mentorship projects. Kamlesh? Uh, so actually, I have submitted two, three projects. So, so any conflict of interest? I think just mean mention about like one project doesn't matter, but actually I have three, four projects submitted. I think it sounds like the policy is just disclose what it, your projects are and that's obvious, so. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Aru? Yeah, so thanks, Tracy. I think if we were to go by what was followed for let's say global forum event last time and before that, um, in case of conflict of interest, it was asked not to evaluate their own proposals. However, average of rest of the scores were considered right for selecting or not selecting a topic. I don't know. Um, it could be up to the evaluation committee that you are, we are going to form today. And they can choose to do that way. If they see a conflict of interest, they could keep themselves away from that particular proposal and see what others say. That's right. That's right. Okay, so uh, volunteers. If we don't have volunteers, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, random number generation and pick four people. Um, because, I, I mean, look at our next topic, guys. I, I, we need to find a way for people to engage. Angelo? I volunteer. Thank you, Angelo. I volunteer. Thank you, Kamlesh. Anyone else? You know? You know, is the hand for volunteering? Yes. Thank you, Dano. Peter? I can volunteer and I will, but I do have like five or six projects. So I would like to recuse myself from that the way Erwin said it as well. So as long okay. as I don't have to judge my own proposals, I'm happy to help. All right, thanks, Peter. All right, so I think we've got our task force formed, uh, Arun. So um, in case you have conflict of interest, those people who raised hands and you need any help to evaluate your own proposals as a third person, I'm okay to do that. All right, thanks, Arun. So uh, I'll let you guys uh, to determine the best approach for how you would like to proceed um, in evaluating the criteria and also evaluating the different project proposals. Um, as always, feel free to uh, reach out to myself if you have any questions or, and or Min. Um, Min has been through this process before, so I'm sure she has some ideas that can help you out as well. Thank you, Tracy. I'll follow up with um, uh, the task force members and we'll get this process going. Thank you. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, the next question, uh, or the next topic is really some open discussion. Uh, I feel like we're struggling a bit as a TSC uh, we're not getting the sort of input that I would expect to be seeing and engagement that I would expect to be seeing from uh, the members of the TSC. And so I want to try and figure out what's going on and what we can do differently. Um, you know, I also think that there's a bit of dialing it in, if you will, uh, from the perspective of I have seen at least four TSC meetings that have been updated to have yourself checked off as having attended that meeting even though that checkbox was blank, because my guess is that you're going through your open task and finding that that's an open task and checking it off. Um, so with that in mind, uh, the questions that I have here are really uh, a starter for how do, we, how do we figure out what's going on? Um, what should we be doing differently to allow you specifically as a TSC member to be more engaged in these discussions during the TSC call and uh, also between the TSC calls, right? So. The last couple of meetings, there have been action items coming out of those TSC calls, but no follow up or follow through on those. Um, 
what are the reasons that you're not reviewing these project reports as they come in? Um, you know, I checked them yesterday. There were um, five TSC members who have completed all of the reviews for the Q1 reports. Uh, five of the TSC members who have uh, reviewed less than half of those project reports, and then uh, the remaining four, uh, in this case, uh, being somewhere in between. So, uh, you know, what, what's happening there? And uh, what can we do to improve these meetings so that uh, you feel like you can participate and engage in them? Bobby. Hi, Tracy, thanks. Um, I know I've sat on other boards and the ones that I find that the most activity happens in are the ones that have committee members. I mean, like separate committees. So for instance, you would have um, for the initiative to uh, learn more about the special interest groups and the working groups, you would um, have one of the TSC members be in charge of that so that the TSC is formed of committees and each member of the TSC sits on a committee. And then for the meeting, everyone reports, whether they report nothing happened in my committee and the committees could be ad hoc, they could be set up permanently, but then everyone on the TSC is responsible for report every TSC meeting. Okay, thanks Bobby. Dave? Uh, I was thinking that along the same lines that I think we're most effective when we have task forces uh, with a few people on the task force and they come back and report uh, on their findings or proposals to the TSC rather than kind of just talking about it for talking about something for an hour that we might not have prepared for ahead of time. So I think a good example of this was the uh, the chat one. I thought that worked really well, where, where a few people went off, did some homework, and came back with some proposals. And I think we had a pretty uh, concise um, discussion around that and made some decisions around that. So I think that's a good model. Uh, then I guess the question is, how do we ensure that the um, task forces are staffed? And I guess for that question, we could brainstorm uh, the task forces that we think we need, and we can have everybody sign up for at least one of those. So those are my thoughts. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I was going to ask that follow-up question at some point if nobody had volunteered. How do we how do we staff them? Make sure that they're staffed. Um, so appreciate the thoughts, Kamlesh. Uh, actually, my thoughts are like uh, not just only review the review the project report by just clicking by our name. Maybe in the whatever the project reports available, maybe we could have one uh, kind of broad broader discussion what the particular project report is offering what are the details are there and then on the same time we will mark like who are discussing the report instead of someone uh, uh, individually check the report and just mark the click tick that could be one of the i think by the maybe same thing david is mentioning or maybe uh, creating a <clears throat> task force but i think maybe instead of task force simply every time when the new reports come we have a proper discussion on the project and uh, we just click the kind of kind of do the report review itself in the TSC, I believe. Okay. Other thoughts? So Kamlesh, I just want to make sure that I understand uh, you're saying that there would be a, a task force to review the, the reports and then report to the TSC uh, what they found. No, no, I actually I'm mentioning like not a TSC and not a, like a different TA workforce task force, but all the TSC member, like whatever the TSC meeting we have, and maybe we allocate maybe 10, 15 minutes and go through the report and kind of uh, kind of review the report on the same time and everyone should mark what we're understanding about the project and and they are free to explore the more detail about the project individually, but there's some kind of proper call in the TSC itself to discuss the project and mark the project review on the same time. Yeah, so oh. right, I think it's more going back to what we used to do with project reports where we spent uh, quite a bit of time in the uh, TSC call reviewing these project reports, having the uh, person who submitted it or people from the project come and uh, have a conversation with the TSC specifically. Gotcha, thank you. Yep. Hart? Right, sorry for my slow response on the mute button there. I will say that we actually stopped having 
the long discussion on the project reports because that was so dominating the TSC agenda that we couldn't do anything else. Um, and so we we opted to to have a shorter discussion for those. So I'm not sure we want to go back to what we were doing before, uh, but if there's some good way to have discussion, then then maybe that you know in a way that doesn't dominate the whole meeting time, then that might be good. Yep. That's hard, Jim. Yeah, uh, to me, I feel like the, the, the thing that I've been doing uh, uh, on the uh, committee is falls into two camps. One is process related things that needs to be identified uh, by the members and then follow through. Um, I feel like um, for those, um, at least personally, I, I've been uh, kind of participating or being active, uh, maybe 60, 40. Uh, for example, for, for certain things that I know uh, a lot of people are passionate about and there's, there's members that's already been tagged to do them, I don't think my involvement is, is gonna help quite much. Uh, you know, the inclusive language, the, the chat, those are done, you know, very effectively. I didn't think uh, I would have helped uh, too much if I participated more. Others I feel passionate about myself, you know, the project data. Uh, so I tend to participate more. Um, so that's on one camp. The other is um, about the projects. I think we, we may have a problem there, but maybe that's only because me as a new member uh, I have to do a lot of homework to understand what each project does. Uh, and before I do that, I don't feel like I can contribute uh, effectively. And, and it takes time to understand them. And, you know, I kind of uh, privately prioritize uh, the projects. You know, I, I care a lot about Farfly, obviously, and um, Cactus and Babel, but in Indian Aries and Fabric, I already know a lot, right? So. But for the rest of the project, it's gonna take me some time before I can effectively review the reports. So um, I, I, I don't know if it makes sense for us to ask the projects to present to the TSC. That may be a radical idea. We're supposed to understand them already, but I don't know how others feel about this. So, so we can as a team all get to understand the, the projects a little better. I think in the past we've talked about maybe like once a year the project would come in and do a live report. So like one out of four uh, reports would be a live one. We've mentioned that before. I think that's a good idea, but I'll shut up because I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually wanted to remind people that we have the, said that before. And in fact, we had a uh, a more open invitation to all the labs, all the working groups, you know, and SIGs, we invited them saying, hey, why don't you come to the TSC and tell us what's going on in your in your area of the, of the, the hyperledger and you can kind of, you know, help socialize what you're doing by doing that. And, and uh, you know, to me, I always felt like when we had the Hackfest, for those of us who've been around for long enough to remember those, I mean, it was indeed an opportunity to get uh, a little bit of an update of what's going on in other parts of the Hyperledger, which we have lost, unfortunately, because we don't really have that. And yes, there's the global forum, but it doesn't quite do the same. So I, I, I am happy that to remind people that this is an opportunity and maybe we can kind of, you know, be more proactive in seeking presentations from different groups. Uh, and I say groups as a general thing is to be encompassing projects, working groups and so on. But so, so I think that's a, a good thing. But I also wanted to follow up on uh, and, and reinforce what Hart was saying in response to, to uh, Kamalesh is the, the, about the project reports. I mean, I would also not want us to go back. And I think, you know, what, what's being talked about is not really addressing the issue that Tracy um, raises, which has to do more with a lack of participation from the TSC members. Um, 
we, I think the, the, the way the reports are being handled is actually, I like this mode where I can look in at my own time, I look at the reports and I often comment. I ask questions, I ask clarifications, I point things out. And I think more people should do that. And yes, of course, you can just click and forget about it, but to have your checkbox uh, click, but that's kind of defeating the, 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 the purpose. And I don't want to force people to do that work if they really don't want to by forcing everybody to do that in some kind of open meeting, so. Okay, thanks, Arnold. Peter? Two things. Uh, first one, I will have to leave 15 minutes early, sorry about that, and then now on topic, second thing. I would, uh, like, what if we just assume that maybe the people who are not regularly reviewing the reports, maybe they have some uh, something set up in a way that they don't actually see or forget. I know this uh, happened to some Cactus maintainers where they wouldn't know anything about me talking to them on GitHub because they didn't have notifications set up. So going on that, giving everyone the benefit of the doubt angle, we could do sort of a, a roll call for people who missed to review reports and then they could uh, either just say, Something like uh, what Jim said, which I would then totally accept, for example, that, uh, well, this project or that project, I was just not comfortable uh, actually judging anything on the report because I haven't yet uh, gotten to know it. And then, and then, of course, for those who just forgot, got a little bit lazy, uh, it would be a great uh, reminder such call out that they actually need to, to do this. Thanks, Peter. Um, there's things that go through my head about that, uh, which is, would we be uh, encouraging the wrong behavior, right? I check off my box so that I don't get called out in the TC call um, without actually having reviewed it. I also question if people are, do have their, their confluence stuff going directly to the trash. Uh, so it's that they're not getting notifications when they get a new project report coming in. Um, does that also mean they have the TSC meeting agenda going directly to the trash, which also includes all of the links to the project reports? Um, in which case, that is somewhat concerning, right? Um, but anyway, I'm not I'm not here to stop the brainstorming here. I, I want to, <laughs> you know, improve things here more than uh, talk about ways in which we might uh, discourage even more people from participating in a way that we should part. I will say that the Confluence notification system is pretty bad. Uh, and it results in sort of like a lot of, uh, I would say spammy notifications. Um, I, I don't know sort of what the best way around this is or, or sort, you know, if we notify people like, hey, if we give people one useful notification that they need to do something, they're much more likely to do it than if they get like dozens of, of confluence uh, spam notifications. Um, so, so I don't know what the best technical approach to this is, but you know, something around that would be nice. It's sort of the same with quarterly reports. Um, I know I missed a couple because like the email reminder told me a different day or something because the calendar wasn't synced. Yeah, I uh, I personally have my Confluence stuff coming through. I like seeing the fact that you guys are reviewing stuff. I like seeing the fact that I can see the comments coming through on the project report for things that uh, maybe I didn't consider as I was reviewing the project report. Uh, I, I also like the fact that I can quickly delete email, um, which is not typically the case in my day to day. Uh, so, you know, we each all have our own different sorts of ways of handling things. Uh, and knowing, you know, the work that we need to, to do and to keep informed on what's happening. Uh, I definitely do not get notifications for anything other than the things that have my checkbox tasks uh, on them or things that I've clicked my name off on. Uh, okay, what else? I'd like to hear from the people who haven't spoken up. So I think the people that I know for sure haven't spoken up, Artem, Grace, 
Nathan, Troy, what are your thoughts? Um, I think I really resonated with uh, what um, Jim was saying, actually. So I don't want to repeat exactly what he said, but I felt like uh, definitely, you know, I have different skills and interests um, that I feel like uh, I can contribute more to in those areas. And then other areas I probably can't contribute as much. So that's typically how I balance um, my participation. Um, so that, that definitely resonated. I also, I, I think, um, and I hope I hesitate to open this can of worms, um, but is there a list of, of what are the responsibilities for the TSC members? I mean, attending the meeting, reading the quarterly reports, I'm not sure, is that documented anywhere? Because that would also be helpful just to pull up as part of this conversation. So I know not this past year, but last year, TSC got a welcome message and the information from that welcome message was documented on Confluence. Uh, we could definitely go find that again as a uh, page for reference. Whether or not it has all of the different responsibilities, Grace, I don't know. Uh, in the same way that I know that the uh, responsibilities for the TSC chair were a shock to me when Arno handed it and transitioned over that responsibility. Um, and probably similarly uh, for, from Dano's perspective, uh, that's also not documented anywhere. So, um, <laughs> right, for the vice chair. So things that we could definitely consider improving as far as what, what it would be to uh, you know, as far as the responsibilities. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, yeah, I was like, I also, if, if it's out there, I haven't looked at it in a long time. So the refresh, I'm sure I'm not yeah. going to use a refresh, but, um, uh, but yeah, but then, and also just wanted to echo what David said. I think the task force model is, is definitely, uh, has, has proven to be pretty successful. So with uh, still open questions as you were saying around how we ensure participation, but I, I did think that was successful too. So I'm just plus oneing a lot, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay, I, I do think this, uh, I think you've created a new task force that's going to have to be formed at some point uh, for documenting these sorts of things. So uh, it was an addition to the list, if you will, Grace, uh, not just a plus one. So thank you for your thoughts, Nathan. I think the other piece that's important to remember is a lot of our job in the TSC is to try to remove blockers and get out of the way of what work is happening. So, you know, like suggestions like what Hart gave us to all attend some other um, community meetings besides the ones we normally attend during the week have been things that I found really in interesting and really helpful because it's helped me get more context around what's going on, especially in the six. Um, and that's stuff that doesn't come up very often on our TSC calls. and you know, hopefully, as we figure out what we can do to be more engaged, part of what our conversation is, what's the most helpful to be engaged on? Because um, there probably are things that we're missing um, that would get people more eager to get some things done prior to the meeting. Um, I don't know that everything that we do that way has to be a new task force. Some of it might just be maybe we need to you know, there are cases where we have project reports where we should have five or 10 minute discussion on something that came up in the project report, because not everyone is going to engage best um, on Confluence Wiki edits. Just, you know, that's not going to be everyone's style. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. I, I know last year um, I did a lot of, I stood, I volunteered for a lot of action items that were coming out of these meetings to make sure that we made forward progress on certain items. And I think that's, uh, you know, something that we should think through as well, because you're exactly right. We don't need a task force for every single thing. Um, we just need at least one person to go out and do the work and come back and report back and then start that discussion with the rest of the TSC members. Dana? I think I brought up an interesting thing that I think we need to you know, clarify and figure out what's going on, and that's the SIGs. Um, the structure of the SIGs per the charter is that they, are coming from the main, the uh, general, not the technical steering committee, but the, um, the governing board. And whereas working group and task force come from the TSC. 
So it's kind of unclear what our relationship with the SIG should be. I mean, this is probably an opportunity for us to uh, improve it and clarify it as well. Hey, Dano, I will say that I think that's uh, a part of a whole nother topic uh, where we've at least been having some conversations internally with staff about how to uh, better streamline and redefine sort of the missions of some of the, like the whole, I guess, SIG task force and working group ecosystem. Um, so I absolutely agree with you that this is something that, uh, that we should discuss and think about. Yeah, and just to uh, bring up history that probably some of us don't want to revisit uh, the SIGs and were originally, I think, suggested to be under the TSC and there was discussion that it didn't make sense to be under the TSC, which is why they now fall under the governing board. Um, so I, I think some of the issues that we've had in the past TSCs, as well as potentially this TSC, is that if you weren't there for the history, it's not documented anywhere. Um, so nobody knows why certain things are why they are. Um, and I think that is a, a mechanism that means that the same sorts of things come up over and over again. Uh, we had that, I think, not last year, but maybe the year before TSC, where we were basically covering the same topics over and over and over again. And I think it got really old for some of the TSC members um, because we had that discussion already. Why are we having this discussion again? Um, so I, I think that we have to do a better job of conveying what is now currently tribal knowledge of what's happened in the TSC in the past. Hart? I'm gonna say I 100% agree with that. That's really important. And this has caused some, uh, some big problems in the past. I mean, particularly my, uh, my favorite, I guess, uh, well, I don't, I don't wanna call it my, favorite is the wrong word, uh, but perhaps the most notable area here on, on my mind is all of the, uh, you know, all of the criteria around uh, project incubation proposals, right? You know, we say some things documented, but then, you know, there seem to be a lot of unspoken criteria uh, that's just sort of like, you know, everybody knows that, or well, obviously not everybody, but, but you know, existing TSC members you know, like projects that do this or, or have this and sort of new projects have, have come in uh, and, and struggled with this because what kind of projects we have accepted are not always, uh, not always what we've, we've documented, right? Um, and I, I just agree that documenting what this TSC has talked about, you know, if we decide not to do something that's that's really, it's really important to document that too and, and remember that for future TSCs. I can recall there have been some things that over the course of the TSC, we have spent at least a month, uh, three times uh, deciding, talking about something and deciding not to do it. And if we had sort of written down and remembered why we didn't do it before, it probably would have turned some of these very long conversations into something very short. Um, so I would love to figure out how we can sort of write down this institutional knowledge uh, so that as new people join, they can be caught up to speed in a sort of quick and painless manner. Yep. But I think we have gone a tad bit off of our topic um, of how do we, how do we uh, end up with a more engaged TSC? I'm, as a TSC chair, I'm here to facilitate and help us get to a place that we want to be as a TSC together. Um, and I, I need some help. I, I think this is my call for help, struggling uh, as a TSC chair to know exactly what it is that you guys want to do, how I can help make sure that that happens. 
and uh, move us forward in, in some way that's successful. Jim? Yeah, th thinking back on the early days of, of Fabric, you know, lots of passionate discussions on TSC calls. I feel like we're all, we're all you know, geeks and nerds and developers and engineers and nothing excites us than a concrete technical discussion or topic. Um, I, I don't know how to, how to introduce that kind of content to TSC calls. Um, maybe we can do more to encourage uh, the community to propose more things. Uh, I think we're taking a pretty passive role right now, uh, but maybe we can take a more active role. For example, uh, the you know just as a random example, the merge between the permission chain and 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 the, the public chains in a sidechain pattern with token bridges, that is like um, in our opinion is something that's emerging quite strongly. Um, what can we what can we do so we can do more steering right rather than just reacting? That's that's sort of what's been uh, through my mind lately, but I, I don't know. I don't have a concrete proposal of how to how to introduce that. Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, Hart. Uh, yeah. So this is a great point, Jim, and this also ties into my previous point. Uh, there have been at least two TSCs in the past where the chair went into the your saying that they were going to try to make the TSC steer more uh, and have more technical content. And I assume Arno has his hand raised to also talk about this point. Um, so this has been sort of uh, tried before um, and sort of the, the solutions uh, have not had a big impact. Um, there has been a lot of resistance at the project level to having the, the steering committee do any kind of actual steering, like if uh, all of the projects have been extremely resistant to to basically giving the TSC any any input or, or any power over technical design. Um, so so I'm not sure that that's going to be something uh, that people are okay with because historically they haven't. Um, there have been you know, a lot of attempts to, to bring up technical topics to the TSC or, uh, or, or, you know, have people give technical talks or have the projects, you know, highlight featured talks, um, you know, for whatever reason, these haven't been super effective. Now, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, it's a bad idea. Maybe we just weren't doing it right in the past and maybe there are better, better ways to do these things. Um, and, you know, we have often wondered if, uh, you know, the, the TSC has sort of really not become technical. It's become more of a, a community management, uh, you know, organization. Um, and, and, you know, should we uh, more publicly relate that fact? Um, I guess I'll turn it over to Arno. Yeah, thank you, Hart. And uh, to to answer that very question you just ended up is you know, I I think I've said that before, but uh, I'll repeat. I mean, if you look in the Linux Foundation, uh, you know, sphere, there are many projects where they have technical advisory committees and technical steering committees. And typically, I think what happened is we started with what was expected to be a TSC when we really have a TAC. And if you wanted to, uh, you know, uh, publicize the fact that we are more of a TAC than a TSC, uh, we should just buy the bullet and rename it. I don't know that it matters so much. I was never really motivated enough when I was chair to make that as a proposal, but that's a possibility. I think when the, the way you describe the situation though is a bit more negative than, than, than it really has been in the sense that I don't think that projects are not interested in having the TSC getting involved as much as we all have, you know, uh, involvements in different projects that are fairly, you know, uh, functioning on their own. And there is, 
I mean, as Jim said earlier, I mean, it, it requires quite a bit of investment for somebody who is in a project. So I'm familiar with Fabric. You know, if I wanted to start telling Bezos what they should do, it, it would take a lot of investment from my part. And so I think this is why people, those discussions just don't take place. Now, I wanted to, to say one more thing, though, which is why I initially raised my hand, is that you know, I think we, we need to, to to make sure we are addressing the right problem here, because is the problem, which I think, you know, Tracy started from, that we don't have enough participation, active participation from the TSC, and is it because we are not tackling the right topics that would excite people, including some technical issues, or is it, you know, that people are just not participating and, and we, maybe there is no problem, we don't need to, and maybe the right answer is to reduce the number of TSC calls because, you know, I, they, there's a difference if you have problems that are not being addressed by the TSC and if, or, or, or is just that, you know, we don't have as many problems as maybe we, we, we think we have, <laughs> or need to have, I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, definitely, Arno, I, I uh... It was funny as you were talking, I'm like, should we just reduce the number of TSC calls? And uh, you went right there. And so appreciate uh, those thoughts. Sure. Uh, Kamlesh? So I think hard and hundred is, I think is a very good point because uh, uh, if you see the definition of TSC, like is the responsibility of TSC R2 is still the technical direction of hyperledger, right? That is the definition. And uh, even I take an example when I elected first time in a TSC, so I got some comments and feedback from the community or maybe my network like uh, hyperledger really needs some kind of really technical string so i think this is interesting like how as a tsc we could directly involve with the technical decisions or maybe involvement with the projects i think hard mentioned like there is a some kind of resistance from the project maintainers but still as a we are a technical com committee and we should have kind of involvement with the project level the technical decisions or maybe technical roadmap of the projects. I think something maybe we need to some kind of proper plan or maybe we can get a, get a proper workforce to even decide what should be the uh, TSC roles and responsibilities. And like, and like Anand mentioned, maybe that's why the TSC member is not that much active and getting involved in the conversations. So I think really some something is need to be done. All right, thanks, Kamlesh. Right. This was the proposal that I put forward last year to reform the TSC. Um, I'll I'll put a link to it in the chat. I I think something along these lines might help. Uh, I think also reducing the number of meetings or moving to a pure, you know, email would uh, probably also help. Um, because then everyone would be able to do their thing on their time. Uh, but this is a, it's just a proposal from, from last year. And uh, I, I want things to change. I'm just not sure of the right way to get there. Yep. Uh, I think definitely send this out. Uh, it's something we can review. Uh, I think last year when you, submitted this, it was shortly before the, the election. And so um, I think it didn't get as much attention as it probably should have. And so I think now is the right time for us to, to be thinking through uh, these sorts of things. We're you know, about halfway through this term, if you will. So uh, now is probably a really good time to take a, a look at the organization, the structure, and what we want to do with the TSC going forward. Um, what I've heard so far is some of us think that it's advisory. Some of us would really like to steer. Um, and there's been, as far as the steering part, uh, some challenges in doing that in the past. So, um, but with the new people who have joined the TSC, they may have other ideas that would contribute to uh, ways in which we haven't thought about before that could help. Arno? I just wanted to add one more piece to this tag versus TSC to say that those things are not exclusive. 
in CNCF, which admittedly is much bigger than Hyperledger, they have both, right? So the TAC is kind of at the very high level and does stuff like we do here. And then you have TSCs that are much smaller in scope. And that really talks about the actual technical steering of different, very closely related projects. And if we had like something like project families, which you know is a topic that has been brought up, uh, you could imagine having TSCs for a single family, you have a TSC. Just wanted to. Yeah, no, that's, that's an interesting, interesting idea, Arno. Um, and definitely something for us to consider. So uh, I see that we have just two minutes left before the, the top of the hour. Um, we did not have a chance to hear from everybody on the call today. And I, I feel like that is uh, a concern that I have as a CSC chair, uh, that either you're not comfortable to speak up or uh, you're really so disengaged that it's not worth speaking up. Um, if it's the, the former, please reach out to me directly. I'm happy to take your feedback and, and hear your comments. Um, I want to make this a better experience for all of us. I, I want you to feel like it's something that you enjoy participating in. You are volunteering your time and it is much appreciated uh, the time that you do spend. And, and so I want to make that time that you're volunteering your time and efforts to, to be an enjoyable, um, an enjoyable time for you. So uh, again, please, if, if you do have additional comments, you weren't comfortable saying these things in front of the larger audience and on a call that's being recorded, um, please reach out to me. I'm happy to, to hear those. Uh, if you're not comfortable speaking to me, please reach out to somebody on the Hyperledger staff um, and, and have that conversation. Like this is all about us in, in making Hyperledger as a community, um, Hyperledger as the technical steering committee uh, a better place for all of us. So I appreciate the, the thoughts. I have taken notes on what you've said today. I will try to uh, summarize those in our meeting notes so that we have those for us to consider things that we might want to do moving forward. Um, again, just appreciate your time and your effort. So thank you everyone for participating. And with that, I'm gonna close the call. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See ya.